Good evening, brothers and sisters. How's everybody doing tonight? It's Thursday, April 9th, and today is Unicorn Day. Just in case you didn't know. Waiting for people to get on here. <clears throat> Okay, so tonight we are going over the 12 laws of karma. I actually have a list of 30 somewhere, um, but this is the 12. <clears throat> How's everybody been weathering these storms? Like I said the other night, my hometown got hail. It's been super windy here. I know my friends, have, their internet has been knocked out. Their power's been knocked out. Um, been lucky here so far. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Okay, so... So since it is so cold and so chilly, I've got my tea. Check it out. Witches be crazy. Most everybody knows it's me and knows that I am crazy. You know those um, things where people share on Facebook that it's... <clears throat> um, you, you write it out, and then it's that person is, you know, is a, is whatever. Well, today I got one that said that I was crazy. I've had ones that said that I was arrested for looting, that... But, yeah, that one was today. It was like, I'm crazy. I'm like, well, we all know that. <clears throat> okay. What would be the best way to start this? Should we start at 12 and work our way down? I'll start at number one. <clears throat> nope. Just because I like to be different. Start at 12 and work our way down. Number 12, the law of significance and inspiration. You get back from something whatever you have put in, out, put into it. The true value of something is a direct result of the energy and intent that is put into it. Every personal contribution is also a contribution to the whole. Blackluster contributions have no impact on the whole, nor do they work to diminish it. Loving contributions bring life to and inspire the whole. This actually reminds me of um, the Feather and Bone Ladies because this is what they're talking about with energy and the type of magic that they, um, that they use. <clears throat> that is the law of significance and inspiration. I just got a notification that said that we were live. Hello, Miss Carmilla. So one thing I never told you is the fact that my best friend growing up, her name was Carmella. And you have my middle name. So I just think that's kind of cool. <clears throat> okay, number 11. The law of patience and reward. All rewards require initial toil. Rewards of lasting value require patient and persistent toil. True joy comes from doing what we're supposed to be doing and knowing that the reward will come in its own time. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Samar. So, in case you've missed it, number 12, the law of significance and, and, and inspiration it's where you're putting the energy out and you know that you're going to get um, that energy back. Um, 
as I said, that's like what the, um, the reminds me of the Feather and Bone Ladies. <clears throat> so, and then number 11, the Law of Patience and Reward. And it talks about rewards of lasting value require patient and persistent toil. means you have to be understanding and you have to work towards something. Otherwise, you're not going to get that reward in return. I have a hard time with patience. Majorly hard time with patience. Because I am an instant gratification type person. And if I have an idea, I want it to come to fruit now. Like, I want it out there. And that's why you see a lot of things pop up that I'm doing because I just put it out there. I'm always willing to turn it over to somebody if somebody likes the idea and wants to take it over. But here, here I am and that's why we're doing this and I think it's fun. I have fun doing it and I appreciate everybody joining me. Number 10, The Law of Change. History repeats itself until we learn the lessons that we need to to change our path. Yes, absolutely. You've heard them say history is doomed to repeat itself. Well, it, it will unless you make that change. It's okay. Um, you can always go back and rewatch them. Um, I'm growing and try to put them on um, YouTube, but these videos are too long. But on Sundays, whenever I go live with the meditation and affirmations, those are over on the YouTube. So, you can check that out. Okay, number nine, the law of here and now. Looking backward to examine what was or forward to worry about the future prevents us from being totally in the here and now. Old thoughts, old patterns of behavior, the old dreams prevent us from having new ones. Don't get caught up in your past because it will slow you down. It'll give you this mental block of, and second guess yourself. And you think, well, I couldn't do it then. Well, maybe I can't do it now bull crap because you can everybody changes as everybody moves forward we have to because if we get caught up in that stagnant energy it really just tears us down <clears throat> number eight the law of giving and hospitality if you believe something to be true then sometimes in your life you will be called upon to demonstrate that particular truth here is where we put what we claim that we have learned into actual practice. <laughs> okay, so what I'm what I popped into my head was somebody saying that and if any okay Anybody knows me knows that I have worked in the paranormal field for 11 years. I've, I've done work. Um, I started out as um, an investigator and then went to a researcher. And then after that, um, I just started doing consulting. And I was able to connect people with teams. That's how I met Les from, from CASE. So, then I just started going, being called upon to go in, figure out what was happening, and then basic removal. Sometimes it would get pretty, the removal of said entity got pretty nasty. But anyway, I also get visions whenever I'm there. I can sense the energies I know. I can't see it physically, but if I close my eyes, I can see it with my third eye, and that's how I communicate. So this is where this comes into play. If you believe something to be true, then sometime in your life you will be called upon to demonstrate that particular truth. I've done it. And here's where you put what you claim that we have learned into actual practice. I don't like telling it. I... It just 
happens and sometimes I get to be a part of things. Um, like I said, people that know me know, know about my paranormal work. Um, not, but not everybody does. Okay. Number seven, the law of focus. <clears throat> you cannot think of two things at the same time. I don't care how ADHD you are. Because of this, when our focus is on spiritual values, it is impossible for us to have lower thoughts such as greed or anger. Set your mind to positive. What, Maddie? Come here, Maddie. Come here. You come say hi. She's just being nosy. Hundreds of paranormal experiences. I have been told I'm a medium. If if you have a lot of experiences, um, just test your test it, and that's the only way that you're you're gonna know for sure. Um, always remember to protect yourself, keep yourself grounded. Um, always smudge yourself. I I do kind of a trifecta. I um, sage myself. I use the holy water, and I do the St. Michael's Prayer, and the one where he's um, surrounded you in the white light. Those are the three that I do before I go into any type of paranormal situation. So, okay. Think about your, no matter where you are in your life, put your mind toward positive thoughts. I I am worthy and I am intelligent and I am important. Tell yourself these things because if you are you're setting your vibration higher, you don't have time for none of this nitpicking, greed, anger, and BS that's down here on this lower vibrational level. Number six, the law of connection. Even if something we do seems inconsequential, it is very important that it gets done as everything in the universe is connected. Each step leads to the next step and so forth and so on. Someone must do the initial work to get the job done. you got to have some person starting it. Neither the first step or the last step are of greater significance as they were both needed to accomplish the task. Nobody's better than anybody else. Past, present, and future are all connected. We are all one person. We all work together as one machine moving forward. My whole thing has been, since started Rowan Temple of Light, was all about community and bringing people together, making those connections. That is why we're doing what we're doing now, because I have a gathering scheduled on Saturday. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that. I can't go to Beckley. It's kind of shut down. I can't travel that far. Nobody's going to be able to come. I mean, you do come with our staffs and be like, stay at Staff Link. Don't come near me. I mean, we could do that, I suppose, but that's still breaking governmental rule right now. Do we care? No, not really. But anyway, and it, it breaks my heart because this is two years in a row that I've not been able to go to Beckley. Last year, I had surgery. I was in the hospital for a week and didn't get to go. I had to cancel it last minute. And and here again. So, I will make it back down to Beckley. Just, I, I have to. There's too many people in Beckley in the community that I just adore. So, you all be safe down there. All right, the law of responsibility, number five. 
Whenever there is something wrong in my life, there is something wrong in me. We mirror what surrounds us, and what surrounds us mirrors us. This is the universal truth. We must take responsibility for what is in our life. It's nobody's fault that you don't have a million dollars. It's unconceivably unreachable for the vast majority of people, but it's It's this intention that you set for yourself. So if you say that you are going to um, take this class and you are going to master that class, then you're going to master that class because deep down you really want that to happen. Um, you're taking responsibility for the work that you put out. We mirror what surrounds us, and what surrounds us mirrors us. This is the universal truth. When I read that, I think of my friends. We lift each other up. We don't let each other fall. We're, we're right there, support. Come on, you can do this. We're each other's cheerleading squad. And the law of responsibility helps that. If the people around you are one way, you're going to mirror that that way. I found that out the hard way last year because the people that I was a, a around, surrounding myself with is not the people that I feel comfortable with. And you sh if somebody makes you feel uncomfortable, you should not be around them. That's the universe telling you, no. That energy. Stay away. <laughs> We're like. Okay. The law of growth. And and this saying right here, I've heard it before, but I can't figure out where I've heard it from. Wherever you go, there you are. I don't know how many of y'all have heard that one, but I I have. I just can't remember where I've heard it from. It's gotta be from a song. The Law of Growth, number four. For us to grow in spirit, it is we who must change, and not the people, places, or things around us. Again, the people that you surround yourself with. The only given we have in our lives is ourselves, and that is the only factor we have control over. Only you can be responsible for what you do in your life. When we change who and what we are within our hearts, our lives follow suit and change too. I told myself, okay, so a little bit of backstory. In 2012, I, st okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I forgot what year I got married. Um, the first time. And... Anyway, in 2012, <laughs> only you can prevent forest fires. Ugh, Samara. Okay, I need to take a drink on that. Uh, which is be crazy. Okay. So, back in 2012, whenever I started doing gatherings, um... In, in the hope of bringing the community together, I, I told myself in my head. And I was like, I am going to do this for the community. Um, Pagan Pride's there. But at that point in time, I didn't know what was going on in the South. Because I was just new and just getting, like I said, getting started and... And then I thought, well, I'll just have them local. So I did. I had it in my head that I was going to go all the way with this. I wanted to be a priestess. I wanted to 
be an example. I didn't want to be the person that I was because the person that I was was a horrible person. I know I was a horrible person. So I said it in my head and I changed. So the only given we have in our lives is ourselves and that is the only factor we have control over. Only factor we have control over. Our own lives. So if somebody is trying to influence you or tell you to do something and you are uncomfortable with it in any way, shape, or form, don't do it. Get me down there. Number three, the law of humility. You can't change something if you refuse to accept it. If what we see is an enemy or someone with a character trait that we find to be negative, then we ourselves are not focused on a higher level of experience. Look, okay, I got enemies. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so, I guess maybe I have a problem with that. Um, they hate me. I don't hate them. There's the difference. Um, I don't see negative because I see that the positive that they've done since they started hating me. And I don't want that to sound snooty or anything. But because of what they saw in me, they changed about themselves and now they are better people for it. I hope you I hope that makes makes sense. I'm not yeah, I'm I'm just saying I'm happy for them because they're doing their their thing and I'm um I'm very happy for them. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number 2, the law of creation. Life doesn't just happen, it requires our participation. <laughs> I have a story. We are one with the universe, both inside and out. Whatever surrounds us gives us clues to our inner state. That's why we see, like, angel numbers and repetition, certain animals... Um, be yourself and surround yourself with what you want to have in your life. Okay, so what I was like, <laughs> sorry, stupid phone. Um, okay, life doesn't just happen, it requires our participation. Now, my story with that is, um, of course, I was over at Mom's this morning for Lydia's school, and we're watching the news, and it's got where the churches are open, and some churches are actually filing a lawsuit because they can't have the congregation in their church. And so Mom and I got on the topic of um, praying, and like, they want to pray that's great, but nothing is going to change just by praying. You have to get out there and take responsibility for your life and do something about it. Anybody got anything to say about anything before I hit number one? That's that's the way I've gotten any any more. I am no longer doing things just to make others happy. And I'm doing it because it makes me happy. And I'm just going to be completely out there and honest with everybody. And 
If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Personal, spiritual, whatever. If I don't know, we'll figure it out together. Um, if at any point in time in any of these lives you think of something you want to question to, again, we have the Roman Temple of Light Library. It covers a wider range of um, information, and we can always um, check something out around here. And I'm going through the closet this weekend to see if I can pull anything else out. Stay in there and do something about it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Number one. Woo, woo, woo. 12 Laws of Karma. Number one. The Great Law. As you sow, so shall you reap. Also known as the Law of Cause and Effect. As we will it, so mote it be. If we want, if what we want is happiness, peace, love, friendship, then we should be happy, peaceful, loving, and a true friend. Whatever we put out in the universe is what comes back to us. Never forget that. And ooh, I'm glad we went from 12 down to 1 because that's my favorite. I love it. I get so excited about it. So, yes. As you sow, shall you reap. What you put out, you get back. And I'm not letting no more native energy in, the, in here to me. Oh, I guess to show you guys. Okay, so last night I told you all about the Rose of Jericho. And here it is, how big it is. I don't know if you can see any of the green in it or not. But it is... As open as it's going to get, but I'm just waiting for some of um, some of it to turn green. It hasn't turned green yet. And I'm going to take this water because the Rose of Jericho is all about resurrection, and so that's it's called the resurrection plant. <clears throat> So I can take some of the water and use toward um, any type of renewal spells or um, starting something like um, the new moon. So I might save it and then do something special on the new moon with it. Which I, speaking of moon phases, I hope you all have been out enjoying this lovely pink moon that we have been having. Um, get a good view of it the back window but that's about it <laughs> yeah it's alive it's getting there I they said you can you can it just it dies and it comes back to life over and over and over again so I that's just really cool um, yeah it does it does have biblical um, meaning that's why it's called the Rose of Jericho actually comes so it it's like from the Middle East, and I think this version that I have actually comes from like New Mexico, Arizona area. And they're all over. Okay, so does anybody have any questions, comments? Want to quest have a chat about something? How did every did anybody go over any of the um, numerology from last night? Because I thought that was really cool. Mm. I don't have things on meditation. Mantras. Talk about feng shui. Um, colors. Okay, well, if nobody has any questions or anything, tomorrow night is protection powder night. I have a couple pages of recipes for powders and herbs, herbal mixtures. 
um, for protection and various other things. Um, we are going to make um, protection powder with the eggshells. So we're not going to be in here. We'll be in the kitchen. Um, and you get to see Ben's massive herb collection in there. Only a portion of it is mine. <laughs> That's his thing. His thing's the herbs. So, look forward to seeing you then. Love you guys. And, sorry, Thor's being rowdy tonight. Had him out earlier. So, alright, good night. Love you all. And I'll see you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Blessings.